Lyle, love it. What's your drink? It, uh, so this is a sparkling water from Mexico. Okay. Topo Chico. I went, I went hard. I hope that's okay. <laughs> I went with a vodka tonic. I would have, I would have joined you, uh, you know. Yeah, but you got a show. Before work. So yeah, we're at the theater. Cheers. Cheers. This is where you're performing in what, about three hours from now? Yeah? That's right. Yeah, three hours. Cap Tell Capital me. Theater. Capital We've been Theater, here, been here before. Portchester, New York, right outside of New York City. How did you, what is your story? How did you get here? I have no idea. You know, it, it, it really is amazing uh, that do, doing something that you just love to do yeah. can turn into your life. You didn't plan it that way. You know, I didn't, I didn't plan it. I just sort of hoped and kept, kept trying to just do what I like to do. So you grew up where? What was this, the town you grew up in? You know, I grew up uh, in, in uh, the Klein community, North Harris County, in, in the Houston area. Outside Houston. Yeah. yeah. But that's, that's not, that's a pretty rural place, right? Well, it was. It was. It was. I always joke that, uh, you know, I grew up in the country, now I live in the city and I haven't moved. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of true. Houston's really grown yeah. out to us. It's become a full-on suburban area. And, and uh, it's kind of heartbreaking because the old, old way of life is gone. All the farmers sort of cashed out yeah. and, and sold to development companies. And, Same and in my hometown. Yeah. It's, uh, the old apple orchard is now a housing development. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So did you grow up with a guitar? Did you take lessons? Did you, I'm assuming guitar was the first instrument. Well, it was. It was. My, my mom uh, asked me one day in, when I was in second grade if I wanted to take guitar lessons and, uh, because my second grade teacher's husband was teaching guitar lessons. And so, so I said, why sure, not? yeah, why not? I mean, we, we lived 28 miles north and west of downtown. She would drive home in the, in the Houston traffic, which was... Well, was, she'd come home from work. She'd come home from work, pick me up, take me back into town. My dad would stay... That's dedication. In, in, it's real, real dedication. Are, they, are your parents your heroes? You know, they... Well, I tell you, they... I, I am so grateful for the way they... I, they, they both worked a lot. And because of that, it, it seemed like when they weren't at work, they never did anything without me. So you go off to college, Texas A&M, right? Texas A&M. And is it true that you, by the way, have a, a journalism degree? Is that true? Yes, ma'am. And German? German. Do you still speak? A little. I'll bet you a speak little. a little. If I, if I were drinking something stronger than water, <laughs> yeah, maybe my German would, would get The better. German would come out. And, and so I was reading that you go off to college, and as you said, you started doing a, a few gigs, right? A few kind of what, like coffee houses or something? And it, well, there was a there was a you know a student union committee at, yeah. at the uh, at the, at the uh, Texas A&M that that was a, a coffee house committee. We had, it was it was essentially a, a forum for student performers, and we had performances every Friday and Saturday night. And so I found right. out about that and, and joined up, and, and all of a sudden I was I was in charge of, of booking. And I didn't know anything about it, but they gave me a list of names. I started calling people every week and begging them to come play. We had 30-minute sets from 8 to 12 every Friday and Saturday. And it was called the Basement Coffee House uh, because at one time, it wasn't in the basement. I was confused by the whole thing, but it had one time apparently had been in the basement. Okay. But, but uh, I'd, call, I'd call people and beg them to play. And, and uh, I got to know, and what was great about it was I got to know people you meet there a bunch at of school. Musicians. Exactly. Yeah. And so it was, the association was wonderful and encouraging. So then, what, what's, is there a point in your life when you look back now where you thought, this is what I'm going to do? No. no. No, and I'm still hoping it works out. The, the, it's, you know, working for yourself is an insecure thing. Um, my first record came out in 1986, 31 years ago. And I, never in 1986 would I have thought, in 2017 that, still that I'd still be doing, doing this. this. I mean, it's just miraculous. I, I get to work with the smartest, most talented people that I've met over the course of my life. Most of the people that I work with in the band I've, I've played with you know, since the 70s and 80s. You tour in different ways, right? You, sometimes you tour with just a couple instruments, but here you're with your l large band. Large band. You know, Why are they large, by the way? They're, because they're numerous. Okay. It's nervous. You know, I have some arrangements that are, they're, they're blues songs with some horn arrangements, and, and sometimes early on people would refer to, to, to the music as big band, but I, I would think, you know, it's not big band. I mean, big band's a very specific thing, and it's not big band. And so uh, as I looked around the rehearsal room one day, and my, my producer at MCA Records, Tony Brown, asked me what the name of the band was. I said, I think it's the lar it's the large band, so it's just because we're, we're yeah. there are a lot of us. But but yeah, there, we're 14 on stage this summer. 
I, what I want to know is, what's the secret? Like, how did you do this for all these years? You know, what's your secret sauce to keep a band going for 30 years? You know, well, first of all, I'm, you know, all the, everybody who plays in the band is a solo artist, really, uh, in, in his own right. Uh, e either they make their own records or they play on sessions. Right. Uh, session musicians. I'm just grateful that they they stop what they're doing for a couple of months every year and come on the road with me. Uh, it's 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 the summertime is really when we can sustain the large band, getting to play uh, yeah. some of the the outdoor venues that sort of prop up prop up our our, our budget because it's you know it's it's quite an effort. To, we're almost 30 people with buses and trucks and yeah. all that, and carry yeah. our own sound and all that. So you say you do what you love. You said that before that it, it, it's not really a job when it's something you actually enjoy doing? That's true. What's the best part of being Lyle Lovett? Oh my goodness. Uh, the, uh, you know, I, my, my entire life is, uh, has been such a blessing. And, uh, you know, being, being raised by parents who are so thoughtful and so caring and so loving. Uh, I still have my mom, she's 87 years old. Um, you know, being, f feeling supported by people you care about, feeling feeling loved by people you care about, uh, long friendships and associations. That, that's the I think that's the the best any of us can hope for, and that's certainly those are certainly the best parts of my life. The people that I that I that I've come to know, and the people that I, you know, the people that you work with, that, those are really important people in your life, because you spend a lot of time with sure. them. Sure. And it's it's really important to work with people that. Uh, you know that you care about it and have your back and then that do and and whose back you have as well yeah and 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 i you know i've been lucky to 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 make friendships like that and and uh, uh you know that that really is the it's the people that you get to spend your life with are the, always the best part of your life music industry's changed so much over the last 30 years i i wonder what your advice would be for somebody who's sitting out there, you know, maybe an 18-year-old who's strumming the guitar and hoping to be where you are someday. You know, that, that it, uh, uh, it is, I would have no idea how to, how, how to do it. Uh, other than, I, th I think, uh, you know, no matter what the technology is, no matter how the business might work, I think what's important is doing what's important to you. You know, if you, if, if you have ideas, Pursue those ideas, and and uh, uh, if you you know if you feel strongly about what you're doing, I, yeah. th I think that's the most important thing. But it's hard if it doesn't pay the bills, right? Well, it, it early is, on, it is hard. Yeah. Did you is. ever go through that? Did you ever, well, did you have any hard times, or was it pretty? Well, I, you easy know, on? my my parents sent me to school. My parents paid for my school, uh, and but, so I but I played two or three or four nights a week all through school, and and so I was able to to save my. My playing money, for my my gig money, uh, to you know, invest in tape recorders and yeah. and equipment and guitars and and uh, so so that 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 part was I, you know I, I wasn't having to support myself so that was really nice and 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 uh, in even after school when I was playing the uh, the sort of the folk club circuit around Texas. Um, you know, my parents let me move home whenever I needed to, so yeah. they were nice about it. And didn't, didn't, you know, didn't complain about, didn't complain about uh, having sent me to school and, and right. And then you know, you're coming back home and, and yeah, playing. living under their roof for a little while. Exactly. Yeah. But if you fast forward, was there ever? I kind of asked this before, but was there ever a moment where you thought, okay, now I can do this for the rest of my life? Well, like I can. Th I can make a career out of this. I made my first trip to Nashville. Uh, my friend Nancy Griffith had invited me to sing a background vocal on a record that she was doing in Nashville, so that was my my reason to to go. And and uh, uh, so I so I thought, well, while I'm there, I'm going to try to meet some people and yeah. see see. I had gotten to a point in my life that I, I felt like I needed to figure out if music could be a job, or if I needed to figure out if I you know. Yeah. To, to do something to do something else. Really. Yeah, it seems like there has to be a turning point at some point where you think, okay, this is it's lucrative enough. It's I can I can feed my myself right. <laughs> off this music career. And I, so so I was 26 uh, at that time, and so and it really was that that kind of pivotal time. Yeah. I thought, well, I, I I need to either figure figure this out or or do something else. And and as I started making trips to Nashville, I started getting enough encouragement to to go back every month or so and. And uh, and then the summer of 1985, 
uh, I signed a publishing deal and then signed my record deal yeah. with, with Curb and MCA. And, and then if people know your history, I mean, you take off like a shot, right? Well, it's I, it's know, less than 10 years later, you're getting a Grammy, I think. Well, I, 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 I worked with, a, you know, I was fortunate you know, to work with great people in, in the business. At, uh, Tony Brown at MCA, Dick Whitehouse at Curb Records, Bo Goldson at Criterion Music, all supported me. Do you consider them mentors? Did you have a mentor of any kind? Or? You know, uh, they, they, were, they certainly were, uh, taught me about the business and, and uh, helped, helped me to, uh, figure out how to, how to, how to be. Uh, my, I, you know, when I think of mentors, I think of uh, people like Guy Clark, uh, songwriters who uh, took time to sit down with me and talk about songs and talk about writing. Guy Clark and people like Stephen Fromholtz and Willis Allen Ramsey from Texas and, and uh, Walter Hyatt and David Ball and Champhut from Uncle Walt's band. Mm. Uh, Jim Rooney, who produced that Nancy Griffith record and, and would let me sleep on his couch in, in Nashville. I would, I would uh, sleep on, on his couch sometimes and I had a second cousin named Tammy, whose couch I would sleep on uh, in guest, guest room. Yeah, they were. Yeah, she and her husband would let me sleep in their guest room, and and uh, uh, so it was, so it made those trips to Nashville uh, possible uh, for me. You know? Yeah, you, your last album was was when 2012, right? 2012, right? Do you miss it? Do you miss producing records, or does it not matter anymore in the age of iTunes and touring? Oh no, no, and I, and I intend to make another record. I, it was uh, 2012 was the the last record uh, uh, on my record deal, uh, right? And uh, uh, so that fulfilled fulfilled my record deal with Curb and MCA, and so now I've, I've just been trying to figure out what to do next, and and. Uh, and just you know, keep playing. Yeah. So for your fans, you might do another one. Oh, I'll do. You another. will do for, for sure. Oh, okay, yeah. good. That's good. We're glad to hear that. No, I can't stop. You can't stop. No. Well, I don't want. I mean, you know, why would you? Why would you stop? I, a, a few years ago, uh, I started uh, in, in 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 doing promotional interviews. Uh, sometimes uh, interviewers would ask me when I when I might retire, and I, and I just. I, You're not old enough me. to retire. Well, but it, it, it surprised me the question, but but um, uh, I you know I finally said well, you know this is I think I am retired. I've been retired the whole time. If, if doing <laughs> if doing something that you love to do every day, you know, is is what you do in retirement. That's 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 what I'm doing. You're not old enough to retire. Just saying. I'm just grateful that people still show up. <laughs> you know, really. Lots of people. You no, know, it's nice. No, it's yeah. really nice. The. the uh, yeah, and I haven't well, done a record. There's clearly some record. talent. I mean, give yourself a little credit. Well, thanks. No, I, you know, <laughs> uh, the the uh, uh, to be able to, yeah, you know, just play stuff you make up. Yeah. What was your first first well, job? Well, that uh, was. I mean, that was an unpaid, off-campus radio station mm -hmm. at Cornell, but that's where I learned. That's where I covered. Same as you, I covered city council meetings and yeah. traffic accidents and, you know, people visiting Cornell like. Dalai Lama came once, and I got to cover oh, wow. the Dalai Lama. I mean, did that was pretty him? big, right? Did you, did I did. You ask him a question. I did. That's pretty cool. And I was like, you know, 19 years old. That. That was pretty cool. That is cool. <laughs> What's the biggest obstacle you've encountered along the way? Uh, that's wow. That's a really good question. The, the, you know, the, I mean, mostly uh, obstacles of my own making. You know, uh, uh, I can't think of anything specific, but I, I, I. I you know there there is a there's a challenge to sort of keeping everything going, but you know once again, when you work with people who are dedicated and who are trying to help you, you know it, uh, you can you can make it through anything, and and uh, it's I, 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 I've always tried to figure out what you know what success means to me, and I, and I think success really is just being able to do what you love to do, being able to you know it being. You know, being 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 successful means just being successful enough to to keep keep to do the next thing. Well, it's great to great to sit with you and have a drink. Thank you so much. <laughs> Cheers. You're kind, Kate. Thanks for having me. It's fun. <laughs> really fun to talk to you. Hey, NBC News fans! Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here. And click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.